back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today. I have an awesome holiday Cricut project that is perfect for specifically those that just got married, engaged even, or new homeowners. I really wanted to put this one up on here because for those of you who don't know, Alex and I did get married officially in November. I will post a picture right here from my Instagram if you follow me on there. If you don't follow me on there, please do because I clearly have all of my life updates on there. I'm actually using this for my personal use because I loved the way it turned out. It was just a really good gift, I think, for ourselves this holiday season. So Merry Christmas to us. So if you want to see how I made this serving tray, please keep watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Okay, so as usual, we are going to open up Cricut Design Space and I'm going to start making our design. So the first thing we want to do is click the text button and then we're going to do the initial of the last name for the family that you're using. In this case, it's going to be M, and I'm going to use the font Baskerville, which comes on everyone's computers, whether you're a Windows or Mac user. And I'm gonna make that super big so we can see it. Next, I'm gonna put the established date. This can vary from when they were married to when they just bought their home or when they started dating, so that is personal preference. I did the year that we got married, which was obviously this year, and I'm just adjusting the line spacing because I like it to be a little bit closer together. Then I'm going to adjust the size on that, make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to just center that horizontally to make sure I like how it looks. And last but not least, now you're going to type in the last name. So in this case it's going to be my last name which is McKeel and then I'm going to change it to the font which so weird it did not download as the name of the font, it downloaded as 666 which crazy because the day that I filmed this video I was having bad luck so really weird but I just wanted to show you where the font was from so it is actually from Creative Fabrica which is one of the font websites I use now and why I use it because they have a lot of great deals especially with bundles but I pay a monthly fee and it varies you can pay I think $10 a month I think to $15 a month depending on what you want access for whether it's graphics or fonts this is the name of the font it's called Imitani I have no idea how to pronounce it and you'll see I can automatically download this because I am a part of the monthly group now so when I look at all these fonts I can immediately download them instead of having to pay like a three to you know $20 fee and I will link the website in the video description for you guys to check that out so now you can see I'm trying to adjust the spacing for the last name however the K and the swash on the end is really annoying so I'm going to speed this part up since I did talk about this method in my slice tool video which I will put the card right here and it is super helpful just slicing that little guy off so that way it looks just a little bit better and then once we're all ready we can highlight everything and group it together then we are going to create the circle and this is the template of it. So I actually changed it later on, but it's it says it's 12 inches, but it's actually, I measured it's 11.5 inches. I'm changing the color on it so it kind of looks a little similar to what I want. And then I'm going to send that to back so everything can be shown on the front. I'm going to make the M as big as I want it, but we have to acquire for the cabinet pulls if you want to put them on the sides. I'm gonna change it to the color, which I love the new update, by the way. Um, it actually doesn't look really weird when you change different colors now. It, it looks very more natural, I guess, if that makes sense. Again, I'm just aligning this to make sure it looks good, and then I'm going to drag the established date and see how I like it and where I want it to be. <laughs> And I'm just grouping this quick so I can put everything in the middle and then I'm going to ungroup it again and then move the McKeel to the front. Now once we are all done, see I changed it to 11.5 now and I adjusted the size, we can hide that circle and we can weld everything. With the M we do not have to weld since it is just one single letter. McKeel we will weld because those are all separate letters grouped together and then the establish we will weld. And make sure to save your work so it does not get lost. <laughs> Before we make it, I figured I would stain the circle first and I'm going to remove the tag. It is from Lowe's and I popped a picture right here to show you where it was and the price. 
I'm gonna briefly speed this part up. I bought this stain thinking that it was going to be much darker and this was the color that came out and I was very unhappy with it. I said to myself, let me try and fix this. So I used my classic gray stain in this case and tried to go over that and nope, still did not like it and I was getting very frustrated, AK, okay, why the 666 was cursing me, I think, at this point. So I went in with my classic early American Minwax stain, which I will post in the video description below, and I loved this color. I ended up using the back of the circle because this was just the early American and not the combination of the three stains. Um, I just liked it better, but that is personal preference. It's totally up to you. So if you want to make a mixture of the stains, by all means, do it. So you'll see that is the front and then this is the early American only side, which I'm going to use. And we're going to let that dry as we prepare everything. So now we can make it. I'm going to adjust the design onto the mat. I want to have the reversible vinyl up top and then on the bottom, I'm using the black matte permanent vinyl. So I'm just adjusting this really quick onto the mat and where I want it. And then we're going to connect it to the Cricut device and select vinyl. Again, this is my Cricut removable vinyl, which I did use in my welcome sign video. I will post the card in here somewhere just because this is the exact same method that I'm using in that video. I'm going ahead and cutting where I want it to stop. And then I place it down on the mat. My mat is also very dirty, so sorry. I'm trying to get a new one for Christmas. And then I'm going to put the matte black vinyl down and cut it and make sure I have it aligned on the mat properly. And since it's not really sticky, I have my roller tool that I'm going to roll over it and I'm going to use some painter's tape just to make sure it's on the mat. And then we can insert it into the Cricut with the arrow button and then clicking the C Cricut button. <laughs> it's ready we can click the arrow button again and remove the mat and remove the vinyl from it since my mat isn't as sticky I don't have to flip over the mat and remove it so now we are going to weed our design we are going to be painting the M and then attaching the vinyl to the circle so we want to weed the actual letter of this which is technically I think called reverse weeding And then here we are weeding as usual, so I'm removing the inside of the E, the L, and the zeros of the 2020. Once it's done, we can remove the backing and be a little careful because this font especially is a little bit thin in certain areas, so it might be a little tricky to come up. And then I'm just cutting the excess of it and we are ready to attach it. So now I have the M and off camera I did cut it on the side just because it was a little annoying and I couldn't really measure it. So I'm going to measure the sides of it, make sure it's even in the middle of it. I also didn't put the M exactly in the middle from top to bottom if that makes sense because I want it to be a little bit lower. So if I'm putting like wine glasses or any decor pieces it's not blocking the design. And here I'm taking my piece of chalk and I'm just marking the corners of it and the top of it so I know where to place it down again when I put the transfer tape on. So we're going to remove this, apply our transfer tape, which is always from the Dollar Tree. I buy this online in bulk and it saves so much money and time. And then I use my scraper tool and I'm scraping the M. Now we can remove the backing and it's super easy to remove. We can see that the marks that we have, I did block it, I'm so sorry, but you're going to align that where the marks were. And I'm going to again use my scraper tool and this step is super important because we wanna make sure that there are no bubbles and we can have no bleeding lines when we're painting. Then I can remove the transfer tape. <laughs> Next, before we paint, we want to apply some Mod Podge or polyacrylic, polyurethane, whatever you prefer. I couldn't find my Mod Podge at the time, so I'm using my polyacrylic. And we want to put this inside of the design first because this will stop the paint from bleeding, especially with wood surfaces. It's going to bleed if you do not do this step. And I learned that the hard way and it's not fun. <laughs> 
We are going to let that dry and once it's dry, I'm going to just tape the sides of it because I am a messy painter and I just don't want extra paint on the wood. And now we're going to take our white acrylic paint. This I got from Michaels, but I did link a product from Amazon in the video description and a makeup sponge. You do not want to use a paintbrush and you want to use very little paint because this will minimize the amount of bleeding that goes on. You'll see I dabbed the makeup sponge into the big glob of paint and then I dabbed it on the plate again because you want to have multiple layers of paint. did about three coats. This is the second coat. And now the third coat. Once you're done with that, you want to remove the vinyl immediately. We can apply our transfer tape to the McKeel and establish 2020. Before we apply our vinyl, we want to seal this with polyurethane. I did about two coats because I wanted to make sure it was completely sealed. Once that is completely, completely dry, we can remove the backing. And I'm going to apply the name first into the middle and scrape it down as usual and then remove the transfer tape and do the same exact thing for the established as well. And here you have it, this is the final piece, and now you can go a step further, which is what I did. I used these cabinet poles, they are from Lowe's, but you can get them from Amazon way cheaper, which I should have done in the first place. So I have my husband here, he lined it with the pencil to see where he wanted to drill the hole in, so he's screwing it in both sides of where the cabinet pole is going to go, and then he turns it around just so he could do it from the back too, so it's a little bit easier. And then he's going to push the nail basically all the way through, and the same thing for the other one. And then he's going to flip it over, and we're going to push our cabinet pull in as much as we can, and then he's going to flip the side, use the drill, and that is going to bring the cabinet pull to the back of the wood. And here's the final result. I am so in love with this and I can't wait to see your rendition of it. And that is it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial today. Like I said, this is a great gift for that couple in your life that just got engaged or is going to get married. It's a wonderful wedding gift as well. Let's close out this video. I hope everyone enjoyed and I will see everyone in the next video. Bye.